when I was a medical medical student, I ate meat, and I don't want to shock you, Dotsie, um, and, and Alexander, you're both health conscious people, but I used to go into the hospital gift shop and pick up packs of Merit menthol cigarettes, and I would light them up. I smoked too. Because Here we go. It's you, okay. Oh, really? I did. 12 yeah. years. Oh, really? 12 years. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. My head of surgery would buy Marlboros, and he'd light up, and we'd go to the doctor's lounge, and, you know, there's like... Pittsburgh's worst nightmares, all the smoke in the room. Eventually, we realized that was a stupid idea, and so we all quit smoking. Yeah. Um, the, the, the point I'm making is there's a huge gulf between what you know and what you may decide to do. And part of it was our culture. Every, all the doctors were smoking at those times. Our patients could smoke in bed as long as the oxygen wasn't flowing. Um, oh, wow. And apparently eventually the culture just kind of caught up with us and we thought all right enough is enough let's stop that's that was a generation ago now we're ex at exactly the same place we know that food causes heart attacks we know it causes diabetes we know it's leading to obesity we know all these things um and we know it's killing our children you know the next generation is in trouble um when when we imagine what's going to befall them but that doesn't necess necessarily lead to change for everybody that's the negative side the positive side is more people than ever are interested in changing their diets. They're doing it, whether it's for their health, for the animals, for the environment, for their pocketbook, whatever the reason is, they are doing it. So just like the thin end, end of the wedge brought smoking really to its knees, that's what's happening with diet right now. Um, you can't yeah. uh, talk to anybody about food without finding somebody who's doing a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet or they're, they're coming in that direction, whereas even a year or two ago, that wasn't the case. I agree with you, but I want to push you a little harder because when I was smoking, when you were smoking, I didn't, maybe I should have, and I would have stopped earlier, but I didn't go in and, and get a scan of my lungs and see that they were right. starting to deteriorate, right? So I'm talking about the people... I'm trying to understand behavior and the people that you work with um, and see as patients who have themselves arteriosclerosis but don't want to make a change. Is it because they just would rather take a pill or what do they say to you? What's yeah. their oh, barrier? No, I, I don't think they'd rather take a pill. I, I don't think so. Um, you do hear people, you hear doctors say that. Uh, I can't tell you how many doctors say, oh, my patients are lazy. They'd rather just pop mm. a pill. I got to tell you, I don't think that's true for anybody. I don't think there is any patient who wouldn't take their pills and throw them all in the trash yeah. if they thought that they could do an easy diet change that would make them unnecessary. I really think that's the case. I think part of it, though, is um, foods are, can I use the word, addictive? Yeah. Um, that's true for certain things, and it's not true for, for other foods. Um, strawberries, we like a strawberry, but nobody ever binged on six cases of strawberries. Um, it's different for sugar or cheese or chocolate or meat, whereas people jump in these things and they overdose them on them and they hide, just like typical addiction, um, what they're doing, um, and they do it despite what the dangerous effects that it has, mm -hmm. and they start bargaining with it. Our research participants come in. If we put them on vegan diets. Their diabetes improves dramatically. Sometimes it goes away. But there's a little devil on their shoulder that says, remember cheese? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> wasn't, that a, wasn't that a delightful thing? And they start compromising with their diet to see how much they can get away with. And then their diabetes comes roaring back, and they realize they can't fool around with it at all. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's partly the addictive um, power of foods. It's partly mm -hmm. culture that our culture lures us in. Uh, back to these things, but we create, and, and you, you're creating with this, um, a, a culture, or what sure seems like a culture, of people who are going in a healthier direction that people want to join. So tell us about how you approach your patients in terms of change and encouraging them to change, uh, even when it will save their life. There's some scary statistic, like one out of ten are the, will make the change mm -hmm. even when they know that it's going to kill them if they stay the same. Uh, what have you encountered in, in, your, in your work? And Oh, yeah. I, I, it's a great question. It's, it's the central question, really, Alexandra. But I, I, yeah. to tell you the truth, I'm much more optimistic than, than that. Um, and here's the way we do it. We, we have a clinic right, right over there. Um, it's called the Barnard Medical Center. And patients come in, and about half of them know who we are. And they come here because they want the nutritional part. Okay. The other half... We're just in their insurance plan. So they got diabetes, they come here, they see one of our doctors or the nurse practitioner. And what happens is you don't confront their skepticism. 
You just have to explain you've got diabetes, and this is caused by something you probably haven't heard before. It's caused by the buildup of fat inside your muscle and liver cells, and that stops your insulin from working anymore. And the patient says, what? And right. you have to explain it again. And once you've explained it, they, they, they get it, and the doctor then has to say, here's why we're going to suggest a plant-based diet without a lot of added grease. And you don't confront the skepticism. You just lay out your case. Then when you're done, uh, you say, the dietitian is right there. Would you like to meet with the dietitian? Okay. And you can bring your <laughs> reluctant spouse too. So they sit down together and they make out a menu and they talk about the foods that a person would do well eating. Mm -hmm. They take a half hour or an hour to do it. And then the patient says, I, I'm not sure if I can do this. Well, why don't you come back Monday? We got a free class for you at six o'clock Monday night. And the patient can come to our classes for free forever with their family. And so you've got all the elements of change. And at no point do you ever say, you're wrong, you've had a terrible diet or anything like that. We say, here is the diet that we'd like to encourage you to try. And after about three weeks, their lives are just changed. Um, they, they, they try it out, we really encourage them, we, we follow with them every single week, and it's super, super, super easy. Now, if they goof up, that's okay. You know, there has never been a person who quit smoking, quit a drug habit, quit an alcohol habit yeah. without probably goofing up 600 times before they finally got clean. And that's true with food too, especially with food, because there's temptation everywhere. But our doctors are like good coaches. They believe in everybody. So they never moralize. Um, but they just say, let's dust ourselves off and get back on, on the uh, healthy approach. And so people here go vegan all the time. And if you're in Washington, D.C. ever, I want you to come by and see it. Every Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, I've got my conference room full of patients or members of the public who come in or research participants. They're all embracing this, and it's not rocket science. It's easy to do, and the seeming challenges just so, melt away. So yeah. I'm, inter I'm interested in that very, very, very easy um, because that's a big barrier for people. They think, oh, no, no, I can't even think of three vegan meals that I could possibly yeah. <laughs> eat, and I don't want to, I want right. variety. Right. You, it sounds like you give support and you give clear alternatives to the food that they like and you do follow up. Are those the components of how to help yeah. somebody change? For mm -hmm. those of us who don't have the good luck to be in Washington, D.C., Okay, well, let's say we get to the, to the class phase, um, but you can, do this, you can do this at home, too. Um, I break the change down into two, two steps, or really three. The first step is, why do you want to change? Um, and it's good to identify that. I would like my diabetes to go away um, or okay. to improve, or I don't want to have that heart attack, or uh, I have a painful condition. Uh, um, a person's got migraine headaches, um, or they've got menstrual cramps, and they never heard that a diet might help with that. Um, so we, the why is important. Then step two is take seven days. And during the seven day period, you're not going to take anything out of your diet. What you're going to do <coughs> is check out the possibilities. So what could I have for breakfast? I, and I give the patient or, and, and people can do this at home too. Take a piece of paper, write breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, give yourself some space under each heading and take seven days and pencil things in. So every day of my life, I'm having cornflakes with um, cow's milk. I never tried almond milk or rice milk or soy milk or hemp milk or whatever. Now's your chance. Try it. You're not getting rid of anything, but you're trying the new options. Um, every day I go to the taco restaurant and I have a meat taco smothered with cheese. Well, now this time I'm going to try the bean burrito. Hold the cheese. Um, so all you're doing for the first seven days is checking out the possibilities. That's step two. Step three, once you know what the possibilities are and you found things you like, now Step three is do three weeks, all vegan, all plant-based, whatever your word is, no okay. animal products for three weeks. Do it really well, but, it, but it's easy because it's only three weeks and you already identified the food you like. And at the end of those three weeks, two things have happened. Physically, people are changing. They're skinnier. They're, their blood sugars are coming down. Their energy is better. Their digestion is finally sorting itself out. But the other thing is their tastes are adapting and they found foods that they like. And they're, they're kind of thinking, maybe I don't really need that double bacon, cheeseburger, greasy junk um, that makes me feel kind of rotten. So they didn't expect that in advance, but they discovered their tastes really are transforming just as their health is transforming. Hey, folks. Okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate 
fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.